So now I'm going to go to a little bit of a preview for our upcoming modern Redwood UX. And before we start with the demos, let me roll you a short video that will show you a preview of our user experience. Okay, so you've probably seen not only the video, frankly, this stage and all throughout Open World, the preview of the new Oracle user experience overall look and feel. And now it's my pleasure to show you how that's going to surface in the context of our applications. Let me welcome on stage Hillel Cooperman. All right, hi everybody. Thanks for uh, being here and taking a look. All right, so let's start with something I know you love doing, expenses. It, yes, Steve I wakes up every expenses. morning going, hmm, hope I get to do some expenses today. <laughs> and uh, imagine we're at, the company when, at our, our company when the new Redwood style expenses comes. Get a little email and introduce us as, hey, why don't you check it out? We tap, we go into the browser, we get a little beautiful introduction to all the things it does. And then we figure, well, maybe we can go check it out. Now, if you look in the bottom uh, right corner of the screen, there's this, red, o, uh, this uh, red square with an O in it. That's not just a decoration you see all, of, all over Open World. That's a user interface element for us. In fact, the, the team here at Open World has built one uh, on stage. If it disappears, it's definitely not at my house. <laughs> <clears throat> So let's tap on it and go straight into the conversational experience with our expenses bot. Um, hi there, I'm Oracle. I can create expenses for you. We say, let's check it out. I just had coffee with a candidate. Add expense for $7.56 for coffee with a candidate. And sure enough, it says, did I get it right? It's kind of cool. It notice it says two attendees. I didn't say the number of attendees. I said coffee with a candidate. It parsed that. It figured it out. It got it right. I say, looks good. OK, let's take a more complicated scenario. Let's fast forward a couple of weeks. I'm flying to London for a sales call. As I land, Expenses already talks to our travel system and knows my itinerary, knows that I'm landing in London, knows where I am, and gives me a notification that says, hey, did you know you can take the Heathrow Express from, Lo from uh, Heathrow to downtown London and get the cheapest, fastest way to get there? And it even gives us spending tips. I tap on there, and it gives those. So before you saw, when I want to submit an expense, no problem. I just tell it what to do. Here, it's now being proactive with me and saying, hey, here's some spending tips uh, for conversion rate, tipping policy, and where to get the cheapest cash. Fine. So I say, how much can I spend on dinner? Now, I. I mean, not a lot. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't Still say this budget. with my yeah. boss on stage, but I have not read Oracle's. <laughs> expense policy, end-to-end. Uh, -end. I don't know anyone who, has anyone here done that? <laughs> there are companies, no, put your hand down, I don't believe you. Um, <clears throat> so I say, to the, I say to the system, hey, uh, how much can I spend on dinner? Because I don't have the policy with me, I just want to ask the question, get an answer. One of the cool things is it says to me, well, the policy max is 125 bucks a person, but if you want to get it auto-approved and have Steve not see it, 50 bucks a person is probably your best choice. Understood. So let's fast forward again. I go and I have that meal. We've had a successful sales meeting. I spent a little more than $50 a person. I apologize, but we, we landed a big client. Mm -hmm. uh, and sure enough, 
because I'm swiping my corporate card, we talk to the corporate card system, uh, we get a notification that the expense has happened, and Oracle Expenses says, oh, okay, I see the expense has happened, but I need a receipt. I need more details than the uh, credit card statement can yield. We tap on the notification, ask me for a photo, we position the camera and snap a photo, submit, and the system process it, ask me who is there, and we're done. Okay, let me show you one more thing. So quickly, yeah. when I talked earlier about the digital assistant and how we were gonna do it, and it was available via SMS or via the HTML UI, and how was every transaction initiated and started, Halal just showed you. He started a simple expense report in the browser UI with a little O. He then quickly segued, you didn't even notice, probably into an SMS interface. It's just the way we work every day. We're in the applications we're in, we do our job and we work. And it processed a reasonably complicated transaction, the simple one, just done, and a more complicated one by recommending things like, hey, there's two people there, by parsing the words and going forward. Combination of machine learning with that digital assistant, very effective UI. Yeah, I do, I do love how the technology comes to where you are. You want to be in the browser, you want to be in SMS, exactly. could even be in Slack or Teams, wherever you are will we'll show up. So, so let's go back to that uh, situation where you want to ask, ask it a question. And, and let's go back to Oracle and go and give you a, a sneak preview of the new Oracle Start experience. You get this list of tasks that's personalized for each of us. I'd have a different sort than you would, dynamically based on what we do, what we have access to. But at the top, you see this search box. And much like in your web browser these days, where you can have one box at the top where you can put a URL or a search string in, and the browser just does the right thing, we're taking kind of the same approach. You could go search for a task, search for a piece of data in the system, or you could just type a question, and the system will parse it and understand what to do. In this case, we tap up at the top, and we ask it a question. Can I expense an ATM fee? So I've encountered a situation where I can only use cash, and the system automatically turns it into a conversation, writing the experience, and then my favorite part is it says, well, uh, if you just asked whether you can do that, maybe you're in the process of doing that. Would you like to expense that fee right here, giving me even a set of uh, preloaded buttons that I could just tap on and say, yep, three pounds, that's the right amount. It says, great, if this looks good, just tap and go. Okay. Let's switch gears now, shall we? And I think in the back they're gonna, here, we're gonna fade this out. So we've done our expenses and we're gonna do a brand new application, a new sample. Yeah, okay, great. So, um, <clears throat> I wanna go back, you saw that new home experience, that new start experience uh, in, uh, uh, the, in the phone. And I wanna show you what that would look like on a desktop or a laptop in okay. uh, uh, the browser. Okay. So let's go down to that uh, uh, ask or what we call the Ask Oracle button in the bottom right of the screen and tap it and now we get to this uh, bigger version. Look up at the top, where can I find my pay slip? Ask, how do I develop my career? Ask, how much PTO do I have left? What's it doing here? In this case, it's not just a place for you to put your query, it's a place that will teach our, our users how to use the system. So it's slowly uh, uh, teaching them with suggestions and prompts and hints of what they can do, and as the system right. gets smarter and we add more functionality, more hints and prompts will show up at the top. Yeah. And in a very familiar way, the way browsers starting to work and phones and auto-suggest and et cetera. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna type in, find my colleagues. So basically, now we're gonna to shift to an HCM scenario where okay. I just wanna look at the employee directory. Now, in our research, we know human beings, they have all sorts of ways to say things. Traditionally with technology, what do we do? We make our users adapt to the way the system describes the function. We wanna invert that. Right. You might say, employee directory, find my colleagues, find my coworker, find an email address, find Steve Miranda's phone number, whatever it happens to be. Um, in this case, and in fact, we can get better over time, and that's just in one language. There may be hundreds of ways to do this. In all the language, you can imagine how complicated it gets. We're gonna click on this thing we call connections, and this is our vision for uh, a corporate directory that is hopefully so much more than that. So the first thing you see is we actually get this uh, list, this view of over 10,000 items, most of them employees in our organization, but there's some other items there as well. If you look across the top of the screen, you see some suggestions. 
On the left is the current selection, but it's also always suggesting further potential refinements that the user could choose. For example, clicking on Teams. I want to see all the teams at our organization. Or I want to go hit back, and I want to see all the communities. This is employee clubs and shared interest organizations. And every time I tap on one of those, the system will give additional suggestions for how you can refine even further. So let's go back up to the top, because I didn't really see the exact one I want. Let's say I'm a marketing specialist, and I want to find other marketing specialists in the organization. I'm going to search by title, effectively. I click Search. Again, I get a suggestion for what I could type in there. I type Marketing Specialist. It filters instantly, and I hit Return. Now the system does something interesting. You know Oracle is a company that is all about data. We've done a good job storing your data, securing it, making it available, global, consistent, all this good stuff. We want to also give you great insights on that data. And one of the many ways we can do that is with beautiful, uh, insightful visualizations of that data. Yep. In this case, the 128 marketing specialists in our organization, what do we do? We visualize it on a bird's eye view of the organizational chart. I can even go hover over the, uh, I, over the people in the list and see where people are organizationally. Or I may say what I really want is a geographical view. I click down in the bottom right-hand corner on the thumbnail, and I can actually see it plotted on a map. These are the kind of things, it's not just for this connections area in our HCM system that we want to bring. We want to bring this everywhere. Yeah, when we roll this out at Hilton across those 59,000 hotels, yes. across 400,000, it's going to be a fascinating insight into their business, just from a quote unquote, just a directory. Yeah, totally agree. I'm going to now click on Portland, and I could click on the map or on those suggestions, those refinement suggestions up top, dive in deeper. And now I finally say, OK, here's the 22 people who are in Portland, Oregon, where I happen to work, who have the same title as me. I want to get to know them. I want to connect with them. One last thing I want to show you. When you go to the corporate directory today, it's not just a, um, it shouldn't just be a place where you get an email address or a phone number for someone. It's a place where people introduce themselves to their colleagues, show all the things that they are capable of, uh, that they care about. And so sure enough, we're going to click on Stephanie Kim and her uh, entry in the address book in the, in the connections area will unfold almost like a portfolio, like a brochure all about Stephanie, including little nuanced details like how Stephanie pronounces her name uh, right at the uh, top under her picture, where I can scroll to the right, see about her, see what jobs she's had at the company, and even see recommendations and references from her colleagues on what a great job she's done in certain areas. Finally, if I, I can also see her manager. Uh, right here under organization. If I click on that, we'll get yet another specific visualization designed and tuned just to surf the organizational, uh, the, the corporate organizational chart. And you can see it's just designed and tuned just for that. So this is just a little sneak preview just of expenses and connections that we want to show you today. And I want to just leave you with one more thought. We got a team of hundreds of people thousands even, uh, back at the company are working really hard on this. And they're going to be working hard on this for quite some time to yep. deliver this to all of you. When we look at these scenarios, we don't just care about making them intuitive and uh, making them seamless and, and making them functional for you. We also care about how they make you feel. Uh, we really want you to use this software and feel like you're using not only the, the tool that gets the job done the best, but the tool that makes you happy doing your job, that maybe even gets you to fall in love with Oracle software and really be excited to use it every day in your job. Great. Thanks, Thanks for all. Steve. Fantastic. So we covered a number of different areas. We started off with just some themes of what, what I hear from customers. And again, there's all sorts of different flavors. But the overall theme of disruption, becoming more efficient, modernizing the organization, changing what you have to do. A lot of product companies become product and service companies or only service companies. And then technology pressures, technology innovations or technology opportunities. That's sort of the context. Then we drill down into what Oracle really brings to the table. Best in class technologies. You've heard not only in this session, but other sessions. We have a modern user experience that you've seen here. And then we really bring forth both of those together through things like machine learning, combining the overall completeness of suite, best-in-class technology, surfacing it through modern user experience, including digital assistants. 
That's why we believe Oracle is the best solution for our customers. And frankly, we want to show you customers who have experienced that and our main focus on making those customers successful. Now, the time, though, to start is now. And there's a few reasons behind this. First, we hopefully have shown you a flavor of customers who have already successful. You are not first. You're not first in your industry. You're not first in your geography. You're not first in your size of company. We have many, many, many customers who've successfully moved from either our products or our competitive products to the Oracle Cloud and are achieving great success and are great partners to us. Second, our Oracle Consulting Organization has built a set of utilities and a best practice that we call SOAR, allowing you to soar to the cloud to give you predictability on how much it's going to cost, how long it's going to take, and the business benefits you'll achieve moving from an Oracle application to the cloud. And now, SOAR-like programs have gone to our partners, and our partners have built the same type of capabilities and the same type of offerings and methodologies to convert you from an on-premise system, Oracles or competitors, to achieve the benefits of the Oracle Cloud. So with that opportunity created now, and the effectiveness technology and business processes, working together with Oracle, we are extremely confident and very much look forward to the customer success in the cloud. And then with that, I went through a flavor. I really wanted to have customers talking to customers on this, but there's a lot more detailed sessions. So today we have the HCM general session with Chris Leone. Much, much more about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, lots of details uh, through Clive Swan's general session at 3.15. Rob Tarkoff comes back at 4.45 for CX. Uh, Rondi Ng will lead the uh, ERP general session. Uh, and then the user experience uh, uh, or Oracle to Oracle session, a critical uh, uh, session that's actually running throughout the day, to showcasing how Oracle uses our own technology uh, going forward. And just to give you a sense of Oracle, I know everybody says, well, Oracle's Oracle. Of course you're going to use Oracle capabilities. We are, we're not quite as big as Hilton, but we're 130,000 people. We are in basically every country in the world. We are north of $39 billion of business. We are a software business. We are a subscription software business. We are a consulting business or a services business. We are a manufacturing business, not only of complex equipment like Exadata, but of more commodity equipment like Micro's point of sale machines. We have over 40,000 sales reps in the system. We run all of that, finance, projects, procurement, core manufacturing, Salesforce automation, HR, the entire Oracle company we run on our cloud in a single instance on the same software in the same data center with the same updates as all of our customers. It's quite a story, and we're going to showcase with the people who actually run at Oracle, at the Oracle at Oracle. Then tomorrow, there's more. Halal gave you the information about his UX session at 10 o'clock. Rick Jewell will be leading the supply chain manufacturing with huge introductions on process and project manufacturing, amongst others. And then again, all day, the Oracle to Oracle experience to give you an opportunity to interact with how Oracle's transformed ourselves through our cloud-based solution. So a huge thank you to our customers, and uh, appreciate you, and enjoy the rest of the show.